I want to say welcome back to On The Road With Iona. I've come down from Scotland to Surrey where we have guest number three for our exciting series and it's a very special guest, Niall Horan, global superstar, extremely keen golfer and wonderful human being. The forecast is not looking great. I've told Niall to bring his waterproofs but I really hope we get lucky. Very humid, it's like absolutely roasting, but threatening thunderstorms. Ah, dear, oh dear. I'm a fair weather golfer these days, but <laughs> we're gonna get out there anyway. Live my life on the road. <laughs> so I've always got a lot of luggage and things in my car, including my golf clubs. Oops, <laughs> like a glove. All right, I think I need to do it. Hit a few balls or make a few putts. So the guest today, Nal Horan. Very lucky to have Nal come along to meet me today because there are some huge Nal Horan fans out there in the world. I am definitely a Nal Horan fan, but I know I'm going to be making a lot of people very jealous today. Um, to have his company for nine holes on the golf course. Many people know Niall as a global superstar when it comes to singing, songwriting. He was, of course, part of one of the most famous boy bands of all time. He's since gone solo. He's had some very successful songs, albums. I believe he's currently working on his next album, so we might get some sneaky gossip about that today. But more recently, Nal has become prominent in the golfing scene and he does some work as an ambassador for the RNA in terms of golf being more inclusive and open to everyone. The thing about Nal Horan that I'm really intrigued to find out today is, you know, he's created this management company, Modest Golf. And if you look at who's in his like, pool of talent, it's really young, upcoming players, players that haven't made it yet, which is quite interesting. And it's a 50-50 split between men and women, which you don't often see because we know that golf is still so kind of male dominated. And I wonder why he's taken it upon himself to invest in this part of the game. And I hope today we find out. Show's nearly here. I think he's just around the corner. Now Horan is nearly with us. Let's go and let's go and meet our guest. Hi, hi. Okay. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Nile, it's great to see you. Really, really good Thanks to have you here. Thank you very much for having me and on your channel. One of your first videos. Yeah, only our third channel. guest on the channel. Brilliant. Should have been first, but we won't, we won't hold it against you. <laughs> we won't tell Rick. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, it's just obviously a real pleasure for us and, and luxury for us to have some of your time. Oh, please. Um, I'm a huge fan, I won't miss it. Well, that's very kind. So we can, it's not necessarily just a relaxed ride. Listen, me and you, we don't get to play as much golf as people probably think we do. So any time, I don't know about you, but I'm out in the golf course and just think, hey, I'm happy to be alive. Um, it's, it's good to be anywhere. It's good to be here. <laughs> just start kind of back at the beginning of like mini Nile and back to kind of really the beginning of your journey and, and what you remember from your childhood like what was life like for you growing up and you know what do you remember from that time was it a happy time yeah I think a very very simple Irish upbringing hard probably hard to describe to someone that's not Irish I suppose but it's just very Irish to me mm -hmm. um, in a very in like in a small market town, um, right in the middle of Ireland, like twenty five thousand people I think there was in my town when we were growing up. You know, like three or four schools, twenty six pubs in a mile. <laughs> um, 
My dad worked at Tesco for 30 years. Yeah, my mum was at home. Um, and they split up when I was five. So I kind of jumped between houses for years. And uh, it was just a very, get up, go to school, come home, do your homework, watch The Simpsons, Emmerdale, Coronation Street, go to bed, do it all over again. <laughs> and a bit of football at the weekend. So it was a very, very simple life until about 16. <laughs> You know, I was told in school, you know, that there's a good chance it's not going to work. And I think it was arguing with the principal over a French book or something that I couldn't afford to get. And that's why I didn't have it. Um, and I was kind of told, you know, keep going this way, you know, music, music's not going to work out. And it's, it's harder than you think and all that. And then I just got fired in the belly then from that. Um, that's brilliant. So I was just like, right, I need to, I'm going to make sure. So then I sent them the plaque for 80 million records. Did you actually? Yeah. Did you really? I didn't Did his you office. Back? He retired short after that. He had his job done. <laughs> he got me to sell eight million records. My grandmother had like a, she lived in this community and they had like a pitch and put course that I used to like get in under the fence with a wedge and a putter. Um, she had that right next to her house and I played quite a bit like during the summer holidays. Yeah. And then when we were like 12, myself and two of my best mates joined our local golf club. Okay. Um, and then just from then on, it was Tuesday, Thursday, all the way through our summer. Our golf club had like really good junior days. And it was just about getting that first handicap and getting down as much as you could. Yeah. And we just fell in love with it, playing so 36 a day. Loved it for a long time. Yeah, and then I guess, you know, you get to those ages where you don't have the time to play it. Yeah. When you're like becoming more social and you're out and about, then I just kind of stopped playing, playing it for a while. And then kind of got when the band, when the band was gone and we couldn't leave a hotel room for whatever reason, you know, fans outside. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. We always found like a good, you know, golf courses were always a good place to go to. So Amazing. We play every day. Who was the best in the band? Me. Doesn't say a lot for the band. <laughs> uh, Harry's Harry's really good. Is he? Um, I think he's gotten a lot better. Playing a lot more now. Um, I love it much too. No one God loves golf as much as me. I thought I ever done that. I heard you got oh I own I, I was like, like why? Well no, God, here's my fifty-five foot for her. There, but that was going steaming past. Okay, so take it away for you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Can't win every week. Give me that one. <laughs> you know, I think in, in schools, you know, everyone's taught to be a lawyer, a an accountant, a, you know an office type job, I don't, I don't think they do a very good job at pushing kids to do whatever they want. Mm -hmm. um, um, so I had a two, two teachers in particular, my geography teacher and my French teacher, who I'm still very close with now, who really pushed me to, to pursue it, you know, and would literally put on talent shows in the school wow. to make sure that I felt like they were pushing me to do something. And my French teacher actually filled in the X Factor uh, form for me. She pushed me to do it. Wow. Yeah, Georgina. And um, yeah, if it wasn't for her, I probably wouldn't have done it. Because she was kind of like, you, you should do it. So let's talk about golf in general. I mean, we both love golf. Mm -hmm. We've had different experiences, different you know journeys in our own way. But I think we both align on you know, we're similar ages. It's like, we hope that golf will grow. You're, you're involved in the RNA and your in input has been already kind of very significant, but going forward, how do you think, Niall, we can talk to other people and continue to make the game feel more inclusive? Because in reality, while certain things have changed, it does feel like we've still got a long, long way mm. to go. Yeah, and I think this is where 
very early on why I wanted to talk, why I wanted to get involved with the RNA. They called me actually, which I was absolutely delighted about. Mm. I think the biggest thing is getting eyes on the game and actually, you know, when people are saying, we want to grow the game, but they're actually doing nothing about it. Mm -hmm. I think this is why it's the RNA, say, it's well. very easy to say we're going to grow the game, but actually doing something about it. Um, and the RNA, and I, and I'm, you definitely would agree, we're aligned on golf has always been very good at speaking to golf. Mm -hmm. Like I could stick a driver ad on the telly and a golfer will go and buy it. And we know they're going to see and it. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas we've never really tried to branch out yeah. and make golf speak to other people, other cultures, other, you know, other sports, other pop culture. You know, we've never done that. We've always kind of spoken to ourselves. Mm. Um, and I think that's the big, going to be the biggest, the biggest, th the biggest thing is getting other types of people involved and in, through different initiatives. And also then, then it's about making golf easier to get into. Um, and that's what we're, we'll be doing with the RNA a lot of, is trying to come up with ideas and initiatives and content and mm -hmm. things like that, that actually speaks to other people and not just golfers. Um, and that's what we'll be doing over the next couple of years, which are some great ideas and the, yeah. the thing, but just, just generally speaking to other people, and it sounds such a simple thing, mm -hmm. It's something that golf has never done, and hopefully, we obviously seen a massive growth in the game over the pandemic. Yeah. But now it needs to actually snowball because it, you know, we don't want it to slow down. Because the ta like, if you watch it, the talent is. It's amazing. It's insane. I know. I know. And it's getting better and better. Do you have a favourite? Leona Maguire. Ah. My very, her very own, at modest Leona Maguire. She is savage. She's a cheat. I would not like to meet her in a match. <laughs> yeah, there's not many to do, to be fair. She's uh, she's made out of different stuff, that girl. She's uh, very honest with herself. Yeah. I just said you wouldn't like to play her in a match. She can be scary. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Podcast is. I'm wondering what impresses you about a person. Mm. The the ability to be nice to everyone. There's something that I've always kind of lived by. I've never been like super religious or anything, but well, there's one thing. It's like treat people like you like to be treated, and that's always been a that's always been a big one for me. Like I'll always, if you're no matter how successful you've been or whatever. If you're able to treat everyone the same in the room that you walk into, I think that's a that's a big quality. Um, you know, because you can let money and fame get away from you, mm. um, but once you're good, once your morals are there and you're good with everyone in the room, I think that's that's going to stand you in good stead. And as we just said, relationships and people are, you know, half the battle mm. in terms of you, know, you can go and sit in an office and do a deal or whatever, but if you can't lock eyes with someone and, and sit and walk into a room with people, then you know you've got no chance really. I think that's always been the most, any of my favorite people that I've met are the most successful or the most influential. I've always kind of had that and noticed it. I've sat back and stood in rooms and just kind of watched them go around rooms. And there's a reason why people say certain people have an aura about them or a charisma when they walk into a room, you know they're there. Mm. Um, and that's mostly why, because they're very good with, with people and really getting to know people and wanting to know about people. because I don't practice it. Right. And that's what all amateurs I, do. I thought I read something somewhere that like you t you take a putting mat with you or... Yeah, no, I do. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. I take a, take a putting mat with me. It's usually in the dressing room before gigs. It's a good little camera, actually. Do you, do you do it? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Um, it doesn't make me any better, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I'll even like... I'll put a glass on the floor or open like a uh, old golf ball, uh, golf ball box. Yeah. I'll just have them try and hit it into with. Uh, doesn't make me any better, but um, I find it just generally calming. Mm. Most frustrating part of the game? 
most common to do in your, in your spare time, I find. is it to have you know people around you now like you are a global superstar in any you know sphere we've been under the radar here at Sunningdale Heath lovely little course <laughs> in Surrey um, we're both gearing up for the BMW Pro Am yeah. both slightly nervous yes. to say the least um, but how important is it for you to have like a you know a circle of people around you that mm. you can really trust and yeah. have shared dreams and goals Yes, that's huge, you know. Um, I, I've always kept a very small group of friends. I don't need more friends than I already have. I'm one of those people. Um, yeah. You know, I, I've always kind of kept it close and kept it tight, you know, for people who you can trust. Um, uh, you know, you see a lot of people in what I do, just thousands of friends, you know, more than, you know, sometimes you people have the you know the idea that they're you know, leeches and all of that kind of stuff. I've always tried to keep it very close and and uh, make sure that I trust everyone that, that I work with and you know they believe in me and I believe in whatever they do mm -hmm. and you know keep and keep it that way. It sounds a bit cynical or whatever but I just kind of always kind of tried to keep it small and mm -hmm. probably an Irish thing as well. We're very good at like sticking with each other, keeping it tight and uh, yeah and just getting on with it. Quality over quantity. Correct. Quality over quantity. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so basically, after the band went on a hiatus in, in 2015, me and two of my cousins went literal backpacking across Southeast Asia for five or eight weeks. Wow! And it was the best experience, and it was the most kind of uh, grounding, first of all, because of the types of place you'd be going, you know, that, uh, you know, but, but it, like I've been to all of these countries before, but I'd stayed in five star nice. hotels and got there on private jet and all that kind of stuff. And it was just the complete opposite. And you do, you need one of those kind of like experiences in your life. Do you feel like that's something you have to do quite regularly because your life is quite extreme, you know, you're extremely famous. I think um, over the years, yeah, I've realised that it's not, it doesn't have to be as fast paced as, as I'd had it previously. Um, you know, I've realised you can actually live a normal life if you, you know, I always see myself as a you know, singer, musician, and I look the opposite. I think that's what golf has been for me, I think. It's kind of a good, like, step aside, um, you know, from all that madness. And I do live. Apart from walking into a shop and people coming up and asking you for a photo, mm. you know, I do live a normal life. You know, I go to the pub and you know, I do my own grocery shopping. Mm. You know, I think I think people probably think it's a bit more extravagant than it is. Uh. Um, and you can live that life, but I choose not to. I think I'm I think I'm too Irish for uh, <laughs> for some of the extravaganza. But um, yeah, yeah, I try to try to live as normal life as I can, and, yeah. and then go back to work. You know, if you believe in something enough, go for it, you know, and, and make sure you can put, you put yourself in with the right people and make sure that everyone's looking after each other. And it's a, I wouldn't say I sit down with spreadsheets every night of the weekend and, and you know, and work out numbers and, you know, I'm not that way inclined, but uh -huh. I know to, how to activate an idea. Yeah, you're a visionary. Well, I don't know about that, but I, I just, in my head, I'll try and do everything I can. If I've got an idea, I like yeah. to make sure that I get the right people in the right places to make sure that we do get it done. Um, no point ranting and raving about it. There's been plenty of talk and anything, you know, it's like, oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Uh, you know, golf has been doing it for years. Um, golf's been talking to golf 
for a long time. We're very good at it in golf. Yeah, 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 so it's yeah. about talking to other people now and making, actually growing the game of golf. Yeah, yeah. What are you most proud of that you've achieved so far? Yeah, I think the tournament has been, um, has been has been incredible watching it grow you know when, I, when we first went to Galgorm in 2016 or 17 it was a it was a the Northern Irish Open on the Challenge Tour so to, to, to then flip it to what it is now like I still, still love the Challenge Tour but it's a all-inclusive golf tournament one of very few in the world um, where now G4D are playing um, disabled golf um, you know, men and women actually playing for equal prize money. Um, you know, to to good sized crowds. Yeah. Is yeah, and as I said, it's still in its infancy, but it's uh, that's been our biggest achievement, I think, as a company. Yeah, to have to have you know, there's not many agencies, I don't think, not, not blowing smoke, but you know, there's we've 13 players and half of them are women. Okay, we've got. 207 to the flag. It's been a bit more than that. A wee bit of wind hurting. Downhill up a couple of yards. 207, I'd say playing probably the number, actually. Mm -hmm. It's the life like, I imagine that part of your relationship with golf is about getting out in wonderful places like this where you're in nature and somehow like reconnecting with yourself, I suppose, in a, in a different way. Yeah, it's definitely been like, a, it's always been a getaway for me, golf. You know, the madness that, that surrounds what, what I do. Yeah. I've always found golf a good, like, right, just leave the city and go out and for a day and play play a bit of golf and I feel like I'm a, a bit of a different person on the golf course like I'm, I'm usually quite a, a bit of a lunatic <laughs> um, but you know it's, it's a chance to put the phone in the bag yeah you know so a lot of the time I come out and play, and play on my own mm -hmm. and just kind of shut down and just think about golf for for four hours is uh it's pretty cool yeah And in terms of your next five years, mm -hmm. tell us, share us with us what that looks like. And I know you've been working hard on some music, mm -hmm. um, but you've obviously got big plans in the golf world as well. Yeah. So when we get together again now, like five years time, what will we be? Five years. About? Five. Well, it's hopefully a few more in between. But came on video number three, and then she kicks me off for five years. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like it's one of those things, isn't it? Like you, if you'd asked me five years ago, what would I be doing now? I would be dancing. Like I would never have had a clue. Um, I would like to be playing to thousands and uh, all over the world still, and selling records and doing all the stuff that I love to do. Um, and then I would, in terms of um, in terms of the golf, would like to think that my influence would have got a lot more people into golf. Even that small percentage that you spoke about, you know, if a few, if a small percent of my following can get into golf, that's a lot of people, I suppose, and um, I would like that. And then obviously I would like to see the tournament go on leaps and bounds. Mm. Um, More than one tournament, do you think? Uh, I'm sure you're just gonna focus on that one. Well, we have to get that one to the spot that I'd like it to first. Okay. Um, you know, it's still small in terms of the money, but I think a lot of the, a lot of the ladies can see what we're trying to do. Um, you know, we're trying to get, if, they, if, you know, if those bigger names turn up, for smaller money than they usually pay for, it'll bring bigger sponsors in, and then you know, it'll, in the turn, it will snowball into a bigger, bigger event. And then obviously me going out and getting sponsors and doing all that kind of stuff to try and get the fund up as much as we can, and just get that tournament to where it deserves to be. I think um, would be the aim for the next four or five years in that. And then uh, I would like someone in our camp to win a major. That'd be nice. Oh, epic! <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.